Hi, Bloody Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a horror movie, Death Proof. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. The movie starts in Austin, Texas. Three girls go out to have fun at a diner outside of town. Julia wants weed, but unfortunately she ran out. They discuss guys in yesterday's meeting of Arlene and Nathan, whom they made out with for 20 minutes yesterday and she got fed up. She just kicked him out of the room. And they also worry about where they will get weed and yell at all the posters Julia is on. The girls drive out of town, followed by a black car. The girls go into a diner, while Arlene stays outside to finish her cigarette. A car stops on the road. The driver, after looking at the girl, jumps out of his seat and quickly drives away. At the table Julia says she told the guys in town on the radio that her hot girlfriend, Butterfly, is coming over tonight and together with a friend who happens to be there, they act out a scene where another guy comes onto Arlene. They walk out of the cafe drunk and the man in the cool car laughs with them, but the man in the visor of the car, three pictures of girls and he takes exactly Julia. It's a strange man with a scar on his face. The girls are already in the new pub, sitting with the guys at the table. Julia calls Lana Frank, but immediately the music comes on and she walks away from everyone, telling them on the phone to get Lana to come over, and Shauna at the table explains how it pisses her off when she is called Shelma. Julia texts I want to see you soon to Chris Simonon, returning to the table, she gets a likewise message back. The girls have a drink with the men and Arlene goes out for a smoke, the pub owner asks her to turn on the parking light which is not working, Arlene sees that under that very light there is that car which has stopped at the diner and behind her the guy scares her who calms her down and offers her to have sex in his car. He even has an umbrella to go under the rain. Arlene agrees if only for six minutes and to keep her hair wet. At the pub, the guys discuss that the girls are going to Shani's father's house, which is off limits to guys, and they are going to get them drunk right there. The car driver overhears this. When the guys notice him, they laugh at his scar, saying that he has come out of the past. He stares at the table where the girls are sitting. Arlene shouts to Pam, the girl at the bar, who is giving her a ride tonight. Our driver nudges her the keys, introducing himself as Cascader Mike. He doesn't drink at the bar, just slurps water and sits in pleasant company according to him. Arlene's friends arrive and Pam notices that Mike has his eye on that table with the girls. It turns out he has his eye on Julia but Pam says she will only notice him if he becomes a star. The girls are out on the street. Mike comes over, he meets Julia, who tells him that she is the one on all the posters in town, and she is trying to promote her recording studio, but when he leaves the girls mistake him for another clown. Mike tells the girls behind the bar that he got into stunt work through a brother named Stuntman Bob, and when he starts listing shows where he's been a stuntman, the girls don't recognize any. Outside. Mike hits on Arlene, but when she says no, he says he has a notebook where he writes down everyone he meets, and Arlene gets put on the wretched Dinamos list, but she immediately agrees to his sitting Lombada offer. After the pub, Pam goes to the car with Mike, but the girls make fun of her, and when he comes back he says she won't fuck him because he's old enough to be her father, but Mike says he hears everything. At the car, he tells her that the car is death proof, it has a safety cage, and the passenger seat is fenced in, supposedly where they put a camera when they're filming. Mike sees that the girls have gone left, and as they come to a corner he asks Pam if she should go left or right. She says right, but he says that's a shame, because it was a 50-50 chance. But she was unlucky, now she should immediately get scared and hysterical and Mike drives off left. On the way he beats her with sharp maneuvers, she begs him to let her go but he replies that he didn't lie that the car is unkillable and only the driver in it won't get hurt, and breaking sharply, the girl gets hit hard and soon passes out, and Mike is going to visit the other girlfriends, the girls are partying to music in the car, but they are overtaken by Mike, who turns around, turns off the lights and drives towards them, Pam flies out of Mike's windshield, Juliet gets her leg torn off and a wheel goes over Arlene's head, and Mike's car gets twisted several times. He wakes up in the hospital, where he is questioned by agents. On the corridor of the local sheriffs ask the doctor how he is. She answers that he broke his left index finger, collarbone and nose. He was lucky. But the sheriff doesn't think so. He guesses it was a premeditated murder. 
Just with the help of a car, and on paperwork he's clean everywhere, the bartender will say he wasn't drinking, the girl he was going to help, and the girls in the red car were stoned. He can do an outside investigation, but says he'd rather watch the new race. We are transported to Levon, Tennessee. 14 months later, Mike finds new targets outside the store while the driver has gone to the store. He gets out of the car and sees one girl sitting with headphones on and another wearing a sleep mask and supposedly dropping her keys touches the girl's feet. She wakes up and Mike drives off. One of the girls goes out for a smoke and to stretch her legs, but Mike is standing on the other side of the road again. After shopping at the store, she opens a magazine where one of the girls is, but the salesman offers to buy an Italian Vogue for 27 bucks, and they split it between the two of them. Mike takes pictures of the girls in the parking lot and they drive around talking about their future hangout. At the cafe, the girls are discussing their future projects, and Kim turns out to have a gun that Lee just found out about. Zoe recently found in the paper that some grandfather is selling a white Dodge Challenger from the most popular movies for almost nothing. They arrive at the place indicated in the paper, there they are met by a mechanic who shows them the car, but when they see what's under the hood, Wanting to take it even more, they step aside and want to ask the driver for a ride without him, leaving the girls as collateral, and also Zoe wants to take a ride on the deck of the car, but Kim refuses, then Zoe promises to be her slave for a week. They come to Abby who immediately refuses to sit with this hubby. She offers a better option. She talks the man down and then they take her with them leaving Lee alone. Abby manages to talk the mechanic down by telling him that Lee is doing adult films, so that's why she's like this. They wake Lee up and introduce her to the mechanic as Jasper and they soon pick her up. They stop on the road and get ready to go. Abby asks them to make it faster. Someone goes but they need a harness. They take it from Abby and tie it to the doors. Halfway through Zoe climbs on the roof and holds onto the harness and then all together on the hood where she is more fun than ever. The girls inside are not discouraged either. They're watched by Mike, who immediately pulls his car off the lot. On a curve he starts to catch up to them. He rams them in the ass and Zoe loses one strap. These collisions go on for a long time, but after the next ram, Zoe turns to face forward. They fly off the road. Mike gets out of the car and yells to the girls that it was awesome, but Zoe shoots him in the arm. He gets away and the girls are going to catch up to the freak and get revenge. Mike pulls off the road to drink alcohol and numb the pain, pouring alcohol on the wound. He is in unbearable pain, and also the girls crash into him from behind, and Zoe starts beating him with a pipe, but he starts to take off again. The girls go after him. They go and ram him in the ass. After a springboard they fly out onto the roadway. Catching up with Mike he starts apologizing and saying he just wanted to play but the girls don't forgive, but they skid and go off the road. Mike is already happy that he got away, but the girls drive over him. They pray that the end is not a dead end. While Mike laughs the girls kick his ass and he flips over. The girls get out of the car where Mike screams in pain. The girls get him out of the car and start beating him and Zoe delivers the decisive blow. Support the channel by subscribing, like and on notifications, because with it you will be the first to know about the video. Thank you for watching.